Did you know that Gravistar, the company known for making spider lamp legs, lamp leg spider speaker, spider lamp speaker, also round turret boy and itty bitty cutie charger is now getting into making gaming mice and they sent one over for me to check out and I haven't opened it yet. So let's take a look at what's inside, shall we? On your boot sequence, of course, on your boot sequence. Here it is. We got uh, battery warnings because yes, this is also a wireless mouse. Uh, and yeah, packaging's kind of rough. Let's open this thing up. Ah, it's the typical box in a box. So here you go. This is the ooh, wrong side. This is the Mercury 2 or the M2 wireless mouse. By the way, I didn't test this mouse in advance because you see the pictures, right? It looks very, very skeletony and everything, but I wanted to have my first impressions on camera. Okay, okay. This is a light mouse compared to what I use at home. Uh, this is also a wireless mouse, but it's the Dario EM901. This is featherweight i believe in the specs it comes in at 88 grams or is it 79 grams for the mouse on its own damn this is actually crazy light it reminds me of this mouse right here which is my daily for gaming it's the uh well, I forgot. It's a Cooler Master mouse, but it's super light and the wire is super flexible. So that's why I use this for gaming. But this is almost the same weight. I kind of really like it. Anyways, let's get back to the unboxing. We have the mouse. Of course, we also have a USB-C to USB type A adapter. And you, of course, have your dongle. Is there anything else in that box? There seems to be a false floor. And of course, we get the charging cable. Looks like it's a nice braided cable. Let's see how flexible it is. That's a very nice flex on that cable. It's very, very similar to the uh, Cooler Master here, uh, which is the most flexible cable I've ever seen personally. But yeah, good flex on that. We also get, what are these? Some stickers? Oh, nice. You get replacement skating feet. That's always a good thing, especially if you're going to keep your mouse for a very, very long time. I remember uh, one of my Logitech mices, I had to replace it once and it didn't come with replacements. So I had to scour eBay to find some. This is really good. Gravistar, that's a big point in your favor. Uh, not many manufacturers do this these days. It's not only replacement grippy pads like this right here that you have, but you also get these. These are little grippy stickers. You put them them on the sides here and here and on the actual uh, clickies right here the left and right click and you get slightly more grip uh, not my style I don't particularly like it it will probably get grimy over time but it's an option if you want to I personally prefer the naked look it looks much better like this than it would with some stickers on them but it's the thought that counts so thanks Gravistar and there's one last little cube here and I believe it's empty yeah, there's nothing in there. First thing to do anytime you get a mouse out of its box is look if the skeets, the little gliding pads, have a uh, film over top of it. And as you can see right here, I found that there is a film. So you just gotta remove this on all of them or it's gonna feel horrible skating on your mouse pad. You don't want another LTT incident. Now, this is not bad. It's very, very front heavy because, well, pretty much everything is at the front. I like the uh, skeleton look on it. This uh, actually reminds me of this here, which is, of course, hollowed out. And I prefer this. Uh, the airflow actually makes a difference for me with my EM901. Whenever I game, uh, I start sweating a little bit and that part here becomes a little humid. Whereas with the uh, Cooler Master and definitely this, I won't have that issue anymore. So that's great. Let me get a mouse pad to get a, a proper feel of the uh, sliding action. I got a brand new one uh, over there. So yeah, it has a really, really good glide. I do feel like it's very front heavy, but people who pinch usually pinch up at the top here to play games. Uh, you got really good grips right here on each side, so you're not gonna be uh, slipping. It's got as many buttons as pretty much any mouse. You have your DPI switch right here. You have your roly poly scroll wheel right here. You have your front and back buttons on this side. And of course, well, nothing on the other side. If we take a look at the bottom, you have a switch to go from the three modes that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, you still have ventilation at the bottom right here. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the look and design of it. 
It's a very, very good looking mouse. Oh, and of course it plugs in with USB-C at the front and at the bottom, that uh, hole right here is actually a place for you to put your dongle. Thank you very much, Gravistar. That's great. All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty. So this is the M2, and even though it has a two on the name, its placement in the Gravistar lineup is below the M1 Pro. The frame on this one is made of PVC instead of a magnesium alloy on the M1 Pro. They both use kale switches rated for 80 million clicks and the M2 is 10 grams lighter than the M1 Pro. They both use the Pixart PAW3395 sensor, which is a high-end sensor. I believe uh, Razer uses the 3399 and this one's just a more efficient version of that one. Though uh, nowadays, any reputable brand will have a good sensor and the polling rate on this model is 1000 Hertz or at least uh, that's what the website says. It's a little messy for the M1 Pro, but the M2 definitely has a 1000 Hertz polling rate. Honestly though, the actual real life gaming difference between 1000 Hertz and 4000 Hertz is marginal. Like there's a feelable difference between 500 and 1000, but now between 1000 and up. Gravistar does offer software for the RGB and other stuff. And here it is. I'm showing you the mouse at two different angles on the side here, just so you can have an idea of what the RGB is. But once I click here, I get into the software. Here on the main page, you can customize button two through six. Uh, unfortunately, number one, which is the left key, cannot be changed. You can restore it, import, or export your own little configurations. You can use this right here to do so. On the second page, you have your customization so you can change the dpi settings here plus you can change the polling rate right here of course the dpi change is with the uh, button on the mouse but you can't change the polling rate directly from the mouse here you have some more advanced settings that you would find on higher end mice like mode select currently i'm on corded lift off distance so how far you need to lift the mouse for it to stop registering movement. Peak performance right here, it's kind of like an overdrive thing. Here you have ripple control, which is a motion smoothing algorithm for mice. Personally, I turned that off. Uh, it's not ideal when you want precision. Angle snapping, same thing. It will snap your movement, whether horizontal, at an angle, or vertical. It will basically snap it so that it is more linear. And then you have motion sync, which synchronizes the rate at which the mouse sends out tracking data with the rate at which the PC receives it. That might be the only thing I'm gonna turn on when I'm actually gaming. The other two are manipulating the movements that I'm making, so it's just imprecise at this point. Then here you have a typical macro software. So this is not related to your mouse. This is all keyboard. But I mean, it's an extra feature if that's something that you wanted to do. And of course you have your RGB control here. I personally like to keep it completely off. It makes the battery life so much longer. But if you wanna turn it on, there's a bunch of lighting modes here. And whichever one you choose, you're gonna have more options to switch the colors. So there's some that animate and some like here where it's a single color and it will uh, breathe in and out. That last page here is for updates and whatnot. So yeah, it's a fairly basic mouse software, except of course you have the advanced features here for a higher end mouse. Thankfully, whatever you change on the software is stored on the mouse. So once you unplug it and hook it up to a different computer, well, you don't need to re-download the software to change all of these settings. Speaking of moving from one computer to another, it is a three mode mouse. You have wired, you have Bluetooth, and you have the dongle. So switching from one computer to another is simple. You just put the wireless dongle on your, let's say laptop, and you use Bluetooth for your desktop. I'll probably swab these two since I game on my desktop, but you get the point. So all in all, I think it's a great mouse, but the real appeal of it is of course the, you know, organic skeletty look of it. Um, in my opinion, the paddles are a bit small. Uh, I'm used to having very, very large paddles on my mice, as you can see here and here, because uh, sometimes I literally rest my fingers all the way at the edge here, or even close to the scroll wheel, which in this case, there's, you know, the skeleton part right here that runs in the middle. So your paddles, in my opinion, are slightly small. Battery life on this thing is apparently amazing, up to 90 hours according to their website, but I am going to test it out for about a week and I'm gonna put the number right up here so you have an actual idea. Um, the M1 Pro apparently has double 
the battery life and only is 10 grams heavier. So that might be a, a choice for you if battery life is slightly more important and you don't mind the extra weight. Though price-wise, this one is definitely more on the mid-end pricing. It has all of the fixings of a high-end mouse, but it's 80 bucks instead of, you know, 130, 150, or 170 like some of the Logitech and Corsair stuff. Personally, I'm kind of a frugal guy when it comes to mice. I usually spend about $70 for them. That's Canadian. Uh, but considering it's a really high-end mouse compared to, let's say, my Dare You EM901, this is definitely worth the money. This is $30. If you just spend double that and a little extra and you get this, you actually get uh, extra performance out of your mouse. So yeah, that's the Gravistar M2. Uh, as usual, guys, leave a like if you liked the video, a comment if you want to talk about this uh, very cool looking mouse. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm sorry if my foot kept passing in front of the projector. I thought this would be cool, but like it's right under my feet, so I keep... Anyways, go check out the projector video too. It's, it's on the channel. All right, take care. Goodbye.